the resurrection is the proof of our forgiveness and righteousness in Christ. Now, listen to this point very carefully. Romans chapter 4, verse 19 to 25. I'm going to give you the proof that you, your sins are forgiven. And you are righteous. Don't think that when you stand here and say, Lord, forgive me, I have sinned against you, forgive That is when God forgives you. No. Now, look at what the Bible says. Romans <laughs> chapter 4, 19 says that, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. And when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah womb. 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. That is Abraham. He believed God and believed God to the point that everything was against him, yet he believed. 22. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Yesterday I said that here. It was imputed when he believed God. You see, the promise of God, he believed it. Abraham didn't believe God for cars. Listen. He didn't believe God for houses. He believed God for the promise of the whole world will be blessed through you. And what is that blessing? All men will have forgiveness of sin through you, Abraham. So the blessings that was promised to Abraham is the forgiveness of what? Sin. When your sin is forgiven, you are blessed. So, 23. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. 24. But for us also. For who? To whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him, that raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. 25. Who? Jesus. Who was delivered for our offenses. You see, because of our sin, he was what? Delivered. And was raised again for our what? Justification. So, what made you justified before God? It is because Christ rose from the dead. And what do we mean by justification? Now, let me show you something. Delivered for our sins. I want to dramatize something for you. Let me take you to the Old Testament. Sir, please come. Senior, please come. Okay, come here. Um, this man. This man is the sinner. He has sinned. And by the court of law, he is guilty and condemned. But this man believed that a savior will come. I'm talking about the Old Testament sinner. The Jew. And so the law is that he has to bring a lamb, an animal, who will die for him. So every year, he will bring the animal. Say, sorry, you are the animal for today. <laughs> Knee down for me. He will bring the animal to the priest. And assuming I'm the priest, he is the sinner. He will bring the animal. And this is the animal. Okay, this is the lamb. Now, when he brings his lamb, listen to what the priest will do. He will not examine the man. He will examine the animal. Do you know why? Because the man is already guilty and condemned. But the animal must be clean, innocent, without any blemish. So the priest will examine the quality of the animal. I came to announce to you that God doesn't examine you. He examines the quality of your lamb, Jesus Christ. That is why he qualified to die for him. So when it happens, when he comes, this is what happens. He will put his hand upon the animal, he himself. Then the priest will pray. And this is what happens spiritually. And why he put his hand upon the animal. All his sins will be transferred to the animal. And all the righteousness of the animal will be transferred to him. This is exchange. You and Jesus there has been an exchange. I said there is an exchange. Now, when he does that, the next thing after the transfer, what happened? Because now, this animal is condemned. The animal never sinned, but it is condemned. The Bible said the wages of sin is what? Death. It is this guy who has to die. But because he has placed his hand on this animal, the sins have come on this animal. So he no more deserves to die. It is this animal that deserves to what? To die. But because it is because of his sin, 
that this animal is dying, he himself will be given the knife and he will cut the throat of the animal. That is why when Jesus came on the scene, John the Baptist laid his hand upon him to represent all of us. And we people, we, you and me, we crucify Jesus. It's not the Jews. It is not the Romans. It is you and me who killed Jesus because he is the Lamb of God who was brought for our sake. He died out of love. He was not murdered. And when he cut the throat, he goes away as a clear man, clean man. And then the animal is sacrificed on the altar. And the animal is not boiled. It is not fried. Because when you are boiling it, you use water. When you are frying, you use oil. But what is this is that they what? They, they roast eh, on, the, on the altar. Is that not it? And all the water in the animal will drain, isn't it? But the first thing is that they will take the blood. Remember the blood. Then they will drain the water. Do you remember when Jesus was on the cross? He said, I am thirsty. Because on the cross, he was, he was drained for your sake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you see how much he loves you? Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loves So that is what happened. He died for you. And then they took the blood and they drained the water. Please go. Clap for him. Now, the blood that was taken is the blood that is sent to the holy of holies. You understand? That is why when Jesus died on the cross, the, the, the curtains, what? Torn into two. Because now there is a blood that speaks for you and for me in the holy place. That is why you don't need a prophet to speak to God for you. Am I saying something? You don't need a pastor to speak to God for you. You yourself, because you have been made righteous by the blood. You can walk into the temple, the tabernacle, the holy of holy. He says that we come boldly to the throne of grace. That we will obtain mercy and find help in times of need. 